In today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews, I'm going to tell you why I continue to love Fernet Branca, why you chose the wrong Fernet Branca for this cocktail today, and why Fernet Branca belongs in your pina colada. The Brancolada on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Could that have been more roundabout? Probably not. Hey there, hi there, ho there, my name is Michael, and welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. I am a bartender and mixologist from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and it's wonderful to have you here today. I'm off the end of filming the Angostura Colada video, not gonna lie, I'm feeling it a little bit, and uh, I'm ready to continue talking about awesome pina colada variations. This appears to be my, my bit for the winter, wishing it was summer. I imagine this coming summer I'm gonna wish it was winter and make like, Mexican hot chocolate or something. <laughs> no, in fact, today's uh, video is yet another variation on the pina colada called a broncolata, which was invented by Jeremy Ortel while he worked at a bar called Donna in New York City. There's no specific year for when this cocktail was invented, though it's considered to be a modern variation of the cocktail featuring a lot of very unique ingredients. And there is actually a really fun story as to how it came to exist. Previously, before working at Donna, Jeremy was actually the bartender for a place called Dram, also in New York. And at Dram, there was a waitress who would frequently bring in uh, ice cream bars, like ice cream sandwiches, as a snack for everyone who worked on the staff. Apparently, Dram also had a chilling machine for Fernet Branca Menta, uh, which we'll talk about in a second here. This chilling machine meant that they had access to ice cream and Fernet Branca Menta, which tastes a lot like mint, so they would cover the ice cream bars in Fernet Branca Menta, and therein lies the overall Genesis idea of the broncolata. A combination of creaminess and fernet and deliciousness in a tropical package. Jeremy no longer works for that bar. He is now uh, an owner of a, I think a consult consulting group about uh, cocktails and cocktail bars called You, Me, and Cocktails with his wife. Uh, so if you wanna look into that, click the description down below, it'll be down there. As far as specialty ingredients go, uh, in order to make this cocktail, you will need a few. Every time you make a pina colada variation, I'm gonna say it, you should make your own cream of coconut and juice your own pineapple. Uh, fresh juiced pineapple is going to have more acid, more flavor, be less sweet than pre-bottled or canned items. And a homemade cream of coconut is going to have less sugar in it than a uh, store-bought one like Coco Lopez, which is the one that is most widely available, but doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work here. And in fact, this is actually one of the few cases where there is actually a recommendation in the original recipe to make your own cream of coconut. Additionally, different from most other pina colada variations, this one is going to require a very small amount of orange juice. Now this one is kind of hazy because there is uh, some fully like whole blended orange in here, but it's mostly just orange juice. Fresh orange juice, you know, is a little bit more sweet and a little bit more characterful than store-bought stuff. You could kind of just skip this and just put in a slight bit more pineapple juice, but we'll get to that when we, we'll get to that bridge, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, okay? The real star of the show here is a particular liqueur made by the Fernet Branca company called Branca Menta. Now, this differs from Fernet Branca in the chief way that the majority of its flavor profile is made up of sweet mint rather than uh, Fernet Branca's sort of all-encompassing flavor of aloe. Most of the chief flavoring components are the same, but the way this is distilled and the balance of those ingredients favors the mint and is going to make it more sweet, more approachable, less intense, and less bitter, namely, which appears to be one of the biggest reasons why this works in this case better than regular Fernet Branca. Now, I have never actually had Branca Menta before. As you can tell, this is a full bottle. However, as you can tell uh, by how low this bottle of regular Fernet Branca is, since uh, our video on what Fernet Branca is, uh, I am quite a big fan of this company and the liqueurs they produce. I mean, I'm a big fan of bitters and Amari in general, so I'm very intrigued to try this Fernet Branca Menta. Let's go ahead and just pour ourselves a little slug here. Compared to traditional Fernet Branca, this is actually coming in at 10% lower alcohol by volume, so from 40 down to 30. And right away, uh, you know, just, just snipping it out of the bottle and out of this glass here, definitely a lot more mint. Definitely a lot more mint, a lot fewer botanicals. Um, I'm not getting that really strong myrrh note as much as I was on regular Fernet Branca. That saffron is still in there, actually. And maybe some of the myrrh, maybe everything is there, it's just toned down in favor of the mint. Um, let's give it a taste. Oh, 
That's, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> it's got this rich sort of gentian, kind of baking spice adjacent bitterness, but without the obvious, you know, baking spice input. And it's really minty, very fresh, mint forward and and just kind of lingering. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> it's also very sweet. This is actually a lot sweeter than regular Fernet Branca, which is surprising um, because I, I mean, Fernet Branca is already kind of sweet. It is technically a liqueur. This is some phenomenal stuff. I see why Jeremy decided to use this in his version of the Broncolata, which we're gonna go ahead and make right now. Let's go ahead and make a Broncolata. I'm going to start this off with one full ounce of our handmade cream of coconut. We're gonna come behind that with just a very small amount, a quarter ounce of orange juice. I don't fully know if orange juice is, oh, hold on. <laughs> False alarm, tastes fine. Just smells kind of weird because it's got whole oranges in it. <laughs> I don't know if a quarter ounce of orange juice is gonna make a significant difference here. You might be able to just throw a couple dashes of orange bitters in there and accomplish the same thing, but I'm going to adhere to the recipe, so there you go. We'll come behind our orange juice with one and a half ounces of fresh pineapple juice. Follow that up with one ounce of Fernet Branca Menta. And finally, as it's sort of base spirit, uh, there is a ounce of a Jamaican rum. They use Appleton Estate Reserve. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, one ounce of Appleton Estate Signature Jamaican rum. Whatever you like, I think was gonna work here more or less. Let's go ahead and add some ice so we can shake. As always, we are going to stick to our one whole cube and one cube cracked ethos. We're gonna cap that up, tap it down, and shake for 10 to 12 seconds to chill and combine. I think this glass is appropriately served in like a poke or a uh, hurricane glass, but I actually do really like the way that pina coladas look in highballs, so I'm gonna grab a highball glass here. I'm gonna fill that up with some smaller cubed ice. We're gonna go ahead and double strain our cocktail over the ice. In truth, I'm not crazy about this wash line, but we will find a way to remedy that. <laughs> now to finish this off, you would normally garnish it with a wedge of orange and some mint. I have no oranges, but I do have mint. So grab a nice little bundle of some fresh mint and poke that down right next to our straws. So I'm going to garnish this as well with some ground nutmeg, which I think is actually gonna be pretty appropriate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a broncolata. All right, with our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and give our broncolata a taste. Cheers. Whoa. That, whoa, that's, whoa. <laughs> Shit. That has got to be the most interesting combination of flavors that I have ever experienced, maybe in my entire life. The sort of sweetness and very gentle acidity of the orange juice is being accompanied by, or rather the pineapple juice is being accompanied by the orange juice and sweetened further by the coconut that's giving it this kind of, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's almost like a, can, it's a candy-like kind of flavor. Uh, like it's reminding me of something, but I can't place it. It's, it's extremely unique. It opens on the botanicals of the Fernet Menta for sure. It's got this very pronounced yet, yet kind of s s subtle, but noticeable rather, mint impact that I think is definitely backed up by those sort of unfamiliar botanicals that Fernet is made with. Um, and those are creating this really nice balance and interesting play off of the pineapple juice, um, sweetened by both the orange and the coconut, which gives you this really nice complimentary flavor. In total, all of those things come together to create this sort of singular note flavor that is entirely unique. It tastes almost like the way a certain kind of soap smells, but like in a good way. Now, not in like the way that like Creme de Violet does, but like in a really good way. And it's very, very hard to place and break down and describe because there's a lot going on really quickly. I think the thing that's really cool though is that there's a sort of chilling effect coming from that Fernet Menta. And it's really, really nice at balancing out the sort of intensity of the flavors from not just the Jamaican rum, which is giving this a kind of nice backbone and a lengthier evolution, but also kind of pulling everything together. It's sort of like these flavors are trying to fight each other. Like they would seem to not get along well in the same glass. But in fact, I'm finding that these are 
really, really synonymous flavors. And definitely ones that evoke a sort of admittedly tropical, fruity version of a mint chip ice cream sandwich. And I am a big fan of mint chip ice cream sandwiches. Yeah, that pineapple is nice and bold, honestly. I think that's the best part about it. You get this pineapple that, through the combination of the orange and the coconut, and the botanicals from the fernet has this kind of vanilla note behind it, probably pulling some from the rum aging too. And then off of that vanilla pineapple note is this fernet mintiness and this botanical bitterness and this rooty gentian bitterness that the, the rum can just come in and blah, waken up and give some give some backbone to. It's it's really good. I don't think I've ever had a cocktail quite like this before. And it's it's gen genuinely it is blowing me away right now. Like, holy shit, it's really, really good. Maybe on the sweeter side, I don't think I could have more than one of these. Um, but that being said, the more you sip on it, the more you stick with it, the more evolved it becomes. It, 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 your palate becomes adjusted to it. And it, ah, oh, I'm finding like almost like a berry-like notes now. Oh man, that's what it tastes like. This tastes a lot like a minty sort of pineapple version of the white Red Bulls. The Red uh, Red Bull, I can't remember what they call them, but they're like Red Bull Coconut Berry. There's something about the flavor synthesis happening here that reminds me a lot of one of those white Red Bulls. That is so weird. <laughs> weird, but really, really good because this is like just the right amount of bold and rich flavor and sweet fruitiness to be I think just at the right amount that anybody can enjoy it, despite the fact that it's using ingredients that, for all intents and purposes, a lot of people probably don't even know exists. So that is some great stuff. I am very glad I decided to try this today. Wow. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. We're gonna go ahead and do our reading from Chris Toast. If you're just joining the channel for whatever reason, we do this at the end of every single episode, and it's to sort of commemorate our cocktail with a proper cheers, because any cocktail that is going to be thrown down your gullet should be raised in honor to something first. We are reading from the section of the book entitled Adventure, and today's quote goes as such. Here's to you, and here's to me, wherever we may roam, and here's to the health and happiness of the ones who are left at home. Cheers. I like that one. I might memorize that quote and use that later. I like that. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch more episodes of the show. A new one comes out every single Friday and sometimes like today on Tuesdays. So if you wanted to catch those, click the bell notification and you'll be told when they're available to watch. I'm also on a couple different social medias that are either appearing on the screen now or have been up for some time. You can follow me there if you want to. I'm really mostly on YouTube, but if you wanted to get me somewhere else in shorter form, I am also on TikTok and I use that one the most. So feel free to stay here if you want, honestly. I upload all the TikTok and it's here too, so I don't know. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, please remember to drink responsibly, but have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.